And it's Ken Kreitzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio. We have a special opportunity at the United States Military Academy today to learn about the Academy's new Cyber Education Academic Center, uh, uh, which uh, is uh, just broke ground in December. And to tell us about it, we are very pleased to have a chance to talk to Professor uh, Dr. Led Klosky, who is Professor of Civil Engineering at West Point, has taught there since 2000, a PhD from the University of Colorado, where actually one of my family went to school, and uh, an undergraduate and master's from Virginia Tech. Dr. Klosky, great to talk with you today. Ken, it's so kind of you to have me on. Our pleasure. Now, uh, tell us a little bit, uh, December 11th, just be the day before the Army-Navy game, you had, uh, you had officials from the Army. I know the Secretary of the Army was there for the right. uh, groundbreaking of this new building. Tell us a little bit about it. And we're all trying to figure out exactly where it is. I know it's on the road leading into the academic center of the, of the post. Yeah, we were, we were super excited in uh, December to break ground on the Cyber and Engineering Academic Center um, at the south end of our central post area. Um, this has been a project we've been driving towards for perhaps a decade um, as, we, as we work to compete for the very best minds um, that are uh, among the young people out there in high school. You know, we want to, we want to make sure that we're providing state-of-the-art facilities for the work that they're going to do once they get here. We, um, you know, there's been a big change in the way that engineers, computer scientists, cyber warriors, if you will, are being trained. Um, and our facilities are flexing to meet the challenges of that new educational paradigm. Well, certainly uh, engineering goes back at West Point to the, to the very beginning, but now cyber has been, become so important. We've had the privilege of attending a couple of the NSA competitions uh, uh, that have been held uh, in recent years and, and witnessed uh, uh, what's involved with that. And tell us a little bit about what is gonna go into this new cyber an engineering academic center, what will be some of the resources available to the cadets there? So the intent is to consolidate the laboratory and project-based uh, learning spaces of three of, our, uh, three of our engineering departments. That's the Department of Civil and Mechanical Engineering, of which I'm a part, uh, the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, obviously a key partner in the cyber fight, um, and the Department of Systems Engineering. Systems Engineering is an important partner for all engineering disciplines as they seek to uh, as they seek to find ways of consolidating effort towards uh, very complex outcomes. Absolutely. Now, what are some of the uh, resources that you need in terms of uh, uh, labs and special uh, equipment uh, in a building to teach engineering and, and cyber? I understand the building already has won a design award. That's right. That's right. And, and we expect that the building will win more design awards. In my own opinion, it's uh, one of the most beautiful federal buildings currently under construction. You can see a picture of it behind me there. It's very much in the military Gothic tradition of West Point, um, but the interior is 100% is high-tech modern STEM education. Um, at the south end of the building, we have a high bay, um, which provides, right now, right now our engineering design space is the tallest space I've got is nine feet. And you know that there's a lot of things that we work on, especially as civil engineers that are taller than nine feet. Um, so we're gonna, have, we're gonna have lift capacity inside of there. We'll be able to bring in military vehicles of one kind and another to work on as cadets uh, work on their capstone projects uh, throughout the curriculum. Um, and so being able to do that sort of work safely was an important part of the, important part of the design concept. So we have the large high bay on the, on the south end for, for big materials. We also have a robotics center inside the building, um, which includes a space for the testing and competition of robots uh, directly adjacent to a laboratory for their manufacture, programming, you know, all the IT things. I, I think robotics is maybe one of the best focuses um, of, the coming, uh, of, the, of the coming facility. Um, you know, robots and drones are going to play a role in defense activities going forward. Those systems are mechanical systems, which are controlled by electrical hardware, which is commanded by software that's written by um, engineers uh, from across multiple disciplines uh, to, include, uh, to include people from philosophy, history, et cetera. You know, we have to inform our activities on the battlefield with the humanities. And so we're gonna wind all those, all those disparate pieces 
seemingly disparate pieces together into teams to accomplish complex projects inside this space. To do that, I need a new, a new type of teaching space. I need, I need very flexible, um, I need uh, utilities rich, I need heavy duty networking and computer support, I need a lot of cooling capacity so that I can put those network uh, machines inside that building and, and, and keep them functioning at top, uh, you know, at the top of their ratings. Um, and all of that means that the building is really designed for flexibility. So one of the, one of the early questions I always get is, hey, what exactly is it going to do? And Ken, if I told you right now that I knew exactly what I need in 2026 to support cyber, uh, cyber defense, I, I would be wrong because what 2026 looks like in terms of whether it's drones, the robotic battlefield, cyber, cyber defense, um, what I really need to do is provide foundational elements, power, cooling, uh, uh, square footage, and then I need to get out of the way of those uh, bright young minds that are going to envision the next, uh, the next thing, whatever that is. Well, you've been teaching at West Point uh, since 2000, and as a professor of civil engineering. And I really liked one of the quotes that, uh, that the Dean Brigadier General Cindy Jeb uh, had about, about education going forward, about the changing uncertain world of, uh, of being a technology driven world. And I think that's gonna be a part of what this building is used for. How, how has engineering uh, changed in your tenure at West Point? So, you know, I guess I have to reach back to my own training as an engineer also to set it into context. But, you know, it, it certainly used to be true that the way that you became, you know, educated, especially in technical matters, was that you found an educated person, a professor, and you, that, that anointed person would then take their five colors of chalk and, uh, and put the knowledge up on the boards. The uh, student would, uh, would, would, would absorb that knowledge, would embody that knowledge, and then when asked about that knowledge, they were able to bring it back and to, and to demonstrate that they had risen to the current state of the art. Um, the rate of change of technology has surpassed that teaching uh, method. Now, we still absolutely lay the foundations, you know, uh, thermodynamics, solid mechanics, uh, uh, calculus, um, all those things are still being laid in a very deliberate way. Um, but once those tools are in place, the student has to then own those tools and use them to do something. Um, and that used to be kind of at the master's degree level, that someone would take the tools of their undergraduate education and put them to use in some new way. Um, that's definitely made a migration down into the undergraduate curriculum, where our undergraduates our, are using the knowledge they're acquiring as they're acquiring it to, to do new things. And to do that, we're partnering with all kinds of army and private organizations um, to, um, to explore, the, explore the realm of technology with the cadets being a prime driver in that exploration. Absolutely, and uh, uh, many of the cadets we have a chance to talk to during the year are in various engineering uh, majors. Uh, systems engineering is, is very popular and we meet uh, those studying civil, mechanical, electrical engineering. Maybe you could uh, just briefly go through some of the offerings in engineering at West Point. Sure. Um, within my, within uh, my own department, uh, there's, there's uh, the civil engineering major and the mechanical engineering major. Um, the civil engineering major, one of the most, uh, you know, one of the longest lasting here at, uh, here at West Point, finding its origins, as you said, back to the very founding of the institution. Uh, the mechanical engineering department uh, is also one of the, one of the first accredited engineering departments at West Point accredited back in the 1980s under the, uh, under the, ABET, under the ABET label. So uh, both of those programs are pretty well understood. Um, I won't say the traditional programs because as I mentioned, there's a lot of change going on. Um, systems engineering is offered, uh, is offered by our Department of Systems Engineering along with the possibility of a degree in engineering management. Um, over in electrical engineering, computer science, um, we have, uh, we have uh, electrical engineers who can pr pursue a wide variety of, of different threads within that major. Right? There's lots of different types of electrical engineers, not just really one stamp that you can say all electrical engineers are X. Um, and it's the, same in the, it's the same in the cyber field. You know, um, somebody might, uh, might concentrate on the software or the hardware side, might look at network configurations, um, might explore machine learning 
uh, as one of their concentrations. So I've got a little cheat sheet here from the from the, the cyber people provided to me. So okay. they have they have uh, STEMs and information technology, network services. They have a cybersecurity concentration, cyber and physical systems, machine learning. Uh, machine learning is, of course, one of the hottest topics right now because it's underlying so much of the artificial intelligence we keep hearing about. Um, and that ability to react quickly is obviously a huge force multiplier uh, on the battlefield. So, you know, uh, I, I, see, I see definite defense applications um, for that going forward. Absolutely. We hear about that in business, uh, applying machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence to aspects of customer service and other, other areas. Uh, now, uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, observations we had is uh, everything is compared to the Naval Academy at West Point, and uh, they opened up a uh, cyber uh, security study building named for Admiral Grace Hopper, who actually spoke at my wife's uh, graduation, a noted uh, uh, engineer who uh, helped develop uh, coding for computers. Is there anything that you can learn from what the Naval Academy opened up this year that you can incorporate into your new building? And certainly while we, while we always hope to dominate Navy on the fields of friendly strife, um, the, the truth is that our, that our sister services, uh, it's, it's, we, we all need to learn from each other as quickly and as effectively as we can. Um, we're, all, we're, all, um, we're all facing the same threats, especially in the cyber domain, and reacting quickly to those in a coordinated way has got to be has got to be what we're up to. So when we began the design of our cyber and engineering academic center, we definitely looked at the uh, facility that the Navy was in the was in the um, was in the process of building at that time, um, and we've been informed by the by the design ideas and by the general goals of that structure. Very good. Now, uh, one thing I, I we always like to uh, encourage STEM education and. What would you recommend for high school students as, as courses of study, uh, special projects they may do that might uh, prepare them uh, to apply to West Point to one of, and be part of one of your engineering programs? As, a, as an engineer, you know, the value of mathematics as a, as a foundational element can't be overstated. So I'd say getting, um, getting, into your, um, getting into your mathematics classes as deep as you can and as early as you can and getting just as much out of those as is possible during your high school time um, is important. Um, and, and I won't say so much important as a, as, a means of, uh, as a means of entry, but as a means of being successful within the engineering majors and as, an, as a practicing engineer once you get, uh, once you get going with it. I, I always see mathematics as sort of like learning a language. So the earlier in your, in your, uh, the earlier in your life that you embrace that as an idea for a, one of the building, your intellectual building blocks, the better off you'll be. The other, the other thing I would encourage is taking laboratory sciences. Um, laboratory sciences, if they're available in your high school, um, just try to scoop up as much of that as you can because laboratory sciences bring the skills necessary uh, to be successful in the STEM heavy core curriculum. That, that's the main thing I would say to a high school student is most universities do not have the science and math heavy core curriculum um, that, that we do at West Point. So I, I like to say that our... Uh, our, our historians and poets uh, know more about uh, math and science than almost anybody, and our engineers know almost more about poetry and history uh, than anybody. So we, we have a very strong core curriculum that, uh, that knits together every cadet with a strong background in both the humanities and STEM. Very good. Uh, so important to inspire and encourage uh, uh, high school students and college students to uh, study STEM and, and science wherever, wherever they can. And, uh, talking with Dr. Led Klosky, who is a professor of civil engineering at West Point. Sir, maybe just ask you, what have you enjoyed the most about teaching at West Point over these last uh, 20, 21 years? So I, I love the structure that the West Point development system brings um, to, 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 to the life of a young person. So you know, a regular, at a regular university, of course, there's a lot of freedom of action during any given day. At West Point, we have a plan um, for, each, for each day's activities. Um, and I think that that, that underpinning um, helps us to develop young people in a, in, a very, um, in a very deliberate, direct, and effective way. And where some might have seen that as constraining, um, I see it as liberating because it, uh, it allows us to build from a common base um, 
in, in, in terms of uh, in terms of activity and and behavior. And that that common base um, really gives us a lot of flexibility in how we teach and and how effective we can be in the classroom. Very so good. That's, that's what I that's what I like most about it. And I also like the beautiful setting. You know, to tell you the truth, walking from one building to another here, it's just a beautiful place. Um, and I find that inspiring every day. No, we certainly enjoy our, our visits to West Point whenever we can. We're looking forward to getting back up there uh, when uh, we get back to normal activity, hopefully later this year. And Dr. Klosky, uh, uh, a final thought about your Cyber and Engineering Academic Center. It's going to open up, uh, I guess the target is December 2024. Final thought about uh, what this is going to bring to West Point? I, I can't wait. I can't wait uh, to step into that new facility and just take a breath, look around and watch the innovation, creativity, collaboration that's gonna be enabled by this uh, just fantastic new federal facility. Um, I'm, I'm also very excited about the young minds that it's going to encourage to become part of the West Point story. Um, you know, we, we want to be part of the modern idea of university education, science and engineering, and this building will bring us right into the, uh, the, the very top tier of that, uh, of that, of that realm. Uh, it's going to be uh, a marvelous building to uh, see uh, uh, in a few years when it's open and, and uh, a facility that will support STEM education and, and support engineering and, and a crucial study of cyber defense, uh, such an important uh, project for West Point and our country. And so I uh, appreciate talking with you today, Dr. Led Klosky, Professor of Civil Engineering at the United States Military Academy. Uh, PhD from University of Colorado, a graduate of Virginia Tech University. Thank you for visiting with us today. Thanks, Ken. Our pleasure. And this is Ken Kratzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio, representing the 2 million veterans of the American Legion and 350,000 members of our organization across the country, the Sons of the American Legion, supporting America's veterans. We're based at Post 135 in White Plains, New York. So for uh, Sons of the American Legion Radio, this is Ken Kratzer.